In this tutorial, we are going to go through CX Engage's configuration menu. You can find the configuration menu along the top toolbar of your CX Engage tenant, and we are going to start taking a look at the tenant option of the configuration menu. The tenant option is where we can come in and see not only settings for this particular tenant, but settings for other subtenants, tenants that exist underneath the main tenant within CX Engage. CX Engage is a truly multi-tenant platform, meaning that although I can click on this particular tenant's settings, the Nova X Texas tenant, I could actually create subtenants underneath the Nova X tenant. Each tenant will operate as a fully independent contact center, meaning that they will have separate flows, separate queues, and separate users. You'll notice that each tenant can be assigned a different time zone, each tenant is allowed to have a different name and is designated to be administered by a different CX Engage account. And each tenant has a tenant ID or a tenant identifier, which can be found by clicking on the tenant's name and inspecting on the right hand side. You notice that this particular tenant, Nova X, itself is a child of another parent tenant. So CX Engage's tenant platform goes above this particular tenant and this tenant is aware of who it is a parent of and the tenants that report to it as child tenants. This is also where we can come in and select a particular look and feel to the site. We could specify a particular kind of branding on the tenant. We can come in and select certain logo files or icon files that can be used inside the tenant. We also can specify color bars and color codes. So if you have a particular customer who wants to have a very specific color scheme inside their platform, they're able to set that by coming into the tenant, setting their color gradient and gradation to the desired tone and depth that they would like to see. To create a new tenant as a child tenant of this account, you would hit the create button. You would give the tenant a name. The name can be changed because again, we're going to track it by its unique identifier. In this case, I can call it child tenant. You can assign a particular administrator to that subtenant and this will pull from the active accounts in this tenant. You'll also notice that we allow you to select a particular outbound provider and to host this tenant in a particular region as defined and allowed by your administrator. A tenant would also be a great place for uh, a development or production instance or for customer or for groups of agents that might need to operate as a separate look and feel. Tenants also have uh, interesting impacts when it comes to integrations, reporting, and flows that we'll explore in a later tutorial. After the configuration of the tenant, another option customers become familiar with is the integrations option. So by going underneath the configuration and the integrations menu, you can open up CX Engage's settings for common integrations and even for custom integrations that you might define. Some of these integrations will be defined by default, like the burst reporting engine. Some of these integrations will be defined only if desired. For example, an email-based integration for routing email or a Facebook-based integration for routing Facebook messages. Frequently, you will have a telephony provider defined within the tenant, although that's not required. In this case, we have elected to utilize the Twilio telephony provider. Each integration will look and feel different. So if I were to click on the email integration, the menu structure on the right changes. If I were to select on the Twilio integration, it changes as well. So these integration tabs are where we store information relevant to each integration. Obviously, the specific settings of each item within the integration menu is more reasonably left to a discussion on that particular integration. So if you wanted to see more about how an integration works for Facebook or for turning on Twilio, we would steer you to the demonstrations that respect those particular items. Another option in configuration is the list option. A list is a place for us to park information that we use in other locations, uh, flows or scripts most commonly. So this is a place where we can come in and define arbitrary lists of data. We could come in and say that this is in this case is a list of pre-canned dispositions with codes so that we can have some consistency perhaps in a, in a routing lookup. You'll notice that lists cannot be created by default in the platform. If you would look to create a list, we would point you to our REST API 
we do all of our list creation through the REST API. Uh, that would include adding new entries, deleting old entries, and similar operations. More ostensibly left to a discussion on the REST API. We also, within the configuration menu, have an option for business hours. Business hours are just like what it sounds, an opportunity for you to come in as an administrator and to determine when a particular call flow is open or close. What time zone those hours should be relative to. If you have flows that span the world, you may want these hours to be respected differently in different time zones. Business hours, however, can do uh, much more than this. Business hours can be used for perhaps an emergency message where we have an emergency on or an emergency off message that would play a message to callers in queue and perhaps uh, change some media and flow routing. So business hours can be created and modified within this interface, but we apply them in the flows that call them. You'll notice that a business hour rule can be set for uh, always open or can be set for particular scheduled hours. You can see each day can have different beginning and end times, and that we can even configure exceptions to those days, for example, for holidays. Most customers who use business rules who have advanced business hour logic can easily be handled by a combination of the flow and a business hour rule that is specific to that particular use case. So again, the business hours to be truly defined would require an investigation into the particular flow-based routing you'd be configuring to use that business rule.